Welcome back guys, today I've got a BMW 2010 1 Series. The customer for this car has told us that he's changed the speedometer cluster because his one was faulty and this one is showing the wrong mileage. What he wants to do is put the mileage back onto the original mileage so that his service history and all of the records are all back to normal. Today I'll be showing you how to take out the speedometer cluster and the CAS 3 unit from the BMW 1 Series. First of all we have to take off the two T10 screws that are on top of the speedometer cluster. There's one on the left and one on the right. Make sure the key isn't in the ignition when you're doing this, especially when you're taking out the plug for the cluster. You can pull out the plastic cover from the top of the cluster and just pull it out, it's really easy. Another thing I would recommend is pulling out the steering column and out as much as it comes and as low as it goes. Now press the black tab and lift up. You can pull out the speedometer cluster really easily once that's done. Next we're going to take out the cast unit. The cast unit is located underneath so you have to take off the bottom tray in the footwell. For that you've got three T20 screws, one in the middle, one on the right and one on the left. Once those are taken off, you've got the little black tab on the left hand side. You have to pull out the centerpiece and the rest of it just comes out after that. You can use a screwdriver or any prying tool that you see fit. Once that's done, the bottom layer of the footwell plastic trim just pulls out. You just need to nudge it out of the clutch pedal fitting. And if you look up from the bottom, you'll see a T10 screw holding the cast unit in. Uh, the best thing to use for that is a 10 millimeter spanner with the ratchet mechanism. Just locate the 10 millimeter bolt. Turn it anti-clockwise. There's not much space to work on in this position because there's everything is really compact inside
once that's done the cast box just comes out there's just the one screw that holds it in lift up the tab to take off one of the connectors and the other connector you press the two tabs on the sides and that lifts up as well if you just wiggle it sometimes sometimes you might need to wiggle it depending on if it's been taken off before or not and it's as simple as that then the cast box is out and the speedometer cluster is out as well now that that's done i'm going to show you how to disassemble the speedometer cluster there's two tabs on the top two tabs on the bottom one on the left and one on the right we're going to take those off after we you can either peel the sticker off or you can just cut it using a blade and just lift up the tabs so that you can get access to the rest of the cluster once you've taken the last tab off the front cover of the cluster just comes straight off and now you have to take off the needles now we're going to take off the back cover if you look inside you'll see little tabs that are holding the connector in so you want to take something that's really thin and just slide it in there and just prise the little tabs to the side and that releases the clip do that for all four of the corners of the connector and you'll feel the back cover lifting up as you do it and now we're going to disconnect the screen for the screen you've got the two tabs one on the left one on the right just lift those up carefully the ribbon screens can get damaged really easily so you have to be very delicate in this position after the screen has been disconnected you want to take off the needles for the speedometer and for that we're going to use a spoon you can use anything that works for you but we find that a thin spoon really gives you good leverage to take it off and you want to make sure you're lifting it straight up so keep a hand on the on the pointy side of the needle and fit the spoon in underneath them and fit the spoon so that it's under the center of the other side and just pry it so that it comes straight up after that's done we're going to move on to the other side of the speedometer again and you've got the white clips on the corners separate the board from the clips so that you can have the board and the white frame of it separately so that you can separate the white frame and the board be careful with the screen that it doesn't come out and that is mostly done now we're going to look for the eprom chip the eprom chip is usually on the front side of the board of the board once you find the chip make sure it's straight we're going to use a hot air gun to take off the chip so what we'll do is we'll start it up let it warm up once it's heated up we're going to face it straight onto the chip so that it gives direct heat onto the chip and the connections which makes it easier for them to loosen up so that we can take the chip off make sure not to touch any of the components on the sides as they will slide off you have to be really careful with this give it a light lift as you're heating it and once you feel it lift off just carefully place it on the side you want to 
mark tip one tip one is always the bottom left of the writing another thing you want to do is you want to label anywhere on the board which way the chip fits straight because if you fit it upside down that will cause you a lot of problems later on The machine we're using for this is called Dash Fixer. Plug Dash Fixer with the power supply. Go for the BMW menu and one series and dashboard because we're doing the dashboard first. We'll go for manual and that shows you what you need to do. It says remove the dashboard and disassemble it. We've done that already. It says find the EEPROM type M35080 and we've taken the chip off. And we're going to connect the MPLEX for the speedometer cluster. For the dashboard, we're going to use the 35 slash 95 board. Connect clip to port M35080. That one we'll do after I've showed you the full manual. And the clip we're using is the 8 pin clip reader. Carefully put the chip inside the clip, make sure it doesn't fly out of your hand, holding it firmly. And it says to watch for pin 1. Pin 1, as I've mentioned before, is the bottom left and you need to watch for the red wire which is pin 1 and make sure you get that on the right place press program and let the machine read the EEPROM that's connected right now The data is showing now is the mileage and all of the EEPROM data. If you press C minus, it shows you the mileage in miles. Before pressing C minus, it was showing in kilometers. First thing you want to do is save it so that you have a backup of the original data in case anything goes wrong in any of the programming or in case you lose the chip. Save the file name to anything that is best for you so that you can remember it and find it if needed later. First attempt is to try and change the mileage on the chip. So we'll input the new mileage. It says working, so it's trying to change the mileage. This process takes the mileage down to zero. And the machine has frozen 
when that happens that means the chip cannot be programmed so you have to change the chip and put a new one mostly what you get with the bmw chips especially is that you can't program them so you always have to change them this is why we create a backup before so that we can get the rest of the eprom data onto a new chip and we can change the mileage there and we're going to get a new chip that's not been programmed before once you've got the new chip out of the packet you need to mark chip one again you can plug the chip into the clip once again so that you can read it go back on the BMW and one series and then onto the dash and select program so that you can read the chip if it's showing FFFF all around it means that it's read the chip and FF basically means blank so there's no data on it at the moment we're gonna press load and select the file that we saved earlier with the data of the same car and now we're gonna go on edit click the little icon with the books on it for more options and click on write this will save the data from the previously taken off EEPROM onto this chip and now you can press back and read the chip again and this time you can see all of the data is different that means that the file has been written successfully if you remember correctly from before it was taking the mileage onto zero and at the moment it's showing the old value is zero so now we're going to add the new value of what we need to put it at press ok and it will show working with the loading bar on the bottom and that says data equal once it's completed data equal means that it's been written properly and everything is fine but just to double check we're going to read again and with the c minus selected is showing the correct mileage that we just input in so that is ready we can press back and start to disassemble all of this and assemble the cluster again we can take the chip out of the clip separate the clip wire from the board the board from the mplex and then the mplex from the machine now it's time to put the chip back on what you want to do is put some flux paste onto the board where the chip will sit this will help to make sure that the chip doesn't slip or slide around and you can get the connections in where you want it to be place the chip perfectly onto the connections where it has to go make any delicate adjustments that you need to you want to get it as neat as possible now you need to turn the hot air gun on Once it's warmed up enough it will reconnect to the board by itself mostly and that's a good thing because you can make sure the chip doesn't move we're using the blade just to make sure that the chip doesn't move but you can use any prying tool just to give it a slight nudge and that will ensure if the chip is secure or not Now we're going to use, warm up the soldering iron. Put 
put a bit of paste on the iron and some soldering wire Let's touch up on all of the points of the chip so that you can have a good clean connection and there's no mistakes in this process it's really vital that none of the connections touch between each other Once you've done all of that, we can start to reassemble the cluster. First, we're going to put the trip reset button through the hole, as that will not go in afterwards, and place it onto the board. Make sure the wire for the screen doesn't get stuck in the middle. And press all together so that it clicks in, and the white clips that we separated it with before, they're all intact. Now, slide the ribbon connector off the screen into the holder and press both sides in and make sure that's fully in so that the connections are secure after that we're going to put the back cover on so just put that straight on and push in as, as it clicks and now we put the needles on make sure you put them in the position that you took it off from best thing for that is to Put it onto position zero on all dials and take it off there. With all of that done, you can put the front plate or cover back on straight on and get all of the six clips that were around it to be clicked back into place. Now we're going to move on to the CAS unit. For the CAS unit there's four tabs, two on the left, two on the right. Just prise them open. Along the bottom of the manual it tells you that you have to program the CAS unit to zero kilometers before reassembling the dashboard. If you don't do this or if you change it to the, the mileage that you need it to or if you change it to anything else, the original mileage that was on the CAS will push onto the dashboard as well and you'd have to reopen everything and start from scratch again. We're going to open Dash Fixer again back into one series and this time we're going to select CAS instead of Dashboard. And we'll go on with the Motorola Pro. Now we need to see which CAS it is. There's two options, CAS 9S12 and CAS 9S12X. We're going to read the big chip as it is on the CAS. If you look closely, you can see it says MC9S12X on at top of the chip. We're going to select that option on the machine. And this is the manual for how to do the cast box. You're going to open the cast box and take out the PCB. It says don't change the length of the wires. Connect the colored cables that I'll show you in the next frame. Check the soldering, make sure all of the connections are in the right place.
connect the Motorola Pro cable to the Motorola Pro and then you can program this is what the cable looks like the cable's got seven connections there's five that are color coded and there's two that are under the black selection this picture shows you where each connection needs to go and you have to make sure you solder it exactly there and none of the other spots are getting touched you have to be very careful with this the cables are very thin and the space you're working with is very tight so they can be you can easily make a mistake so it's highly recommended that you don't try this if you haven't done it before make sure that none of the wires touch each other because that will cause issues The last one you can't really solder on completely because this it's too tight of a space. So what we do is we use a pin tool. With the pin tool what you need to do is hold the last connection by hand and then connect the Motorola Pro onto the Motorola Pro wire. We use the pin because it's really it's a really tiny hole that you have to solder onto and it's really easy to make a mistake so this is safer than that. Now we're going to connect everything up. This is the cable and the Motorola Pro. First we're going to connect the Motorola Pro onto the machine. And you'll see a red light on the Motorola Pro and that will show you that it's connected. Now it's time to connect all of the wires. Once everything's connected, click program. and let the machine detect the EEPROM after it's done loading you need to save this as the BMW CAS box or whatever you see fit And you need to change the CAS box to zero as the menu, as the manual showed before. Let the loading bar finish, it will show you zero and
you can press back and start to disassemble everything. You can release the cable from the pin. And start to take off all of the wires that you connected. Once all of the cables have been taken off, you can slide the cast unit back into the casing and the clips will hold it back into place. And that's how you program the cast box and the speedometer cluster for BMW 1 series. Now we can connect all of it back. First you want to connect the cast box into the plugs, slot both of the plugs in and let them click. Leave it hanging for now, we're just going to test it to see if everything's fine. Reconnect the plug for the instrument cluster and lift the plastic tab to lock it lock it into place. Once that's done you can just put it in so that it's in front of you and you've got a clear view of it. Put the key in the ignition, hold the clutch and press the start button. As you can see the mileage it's showing here is 125,000. That's what we input onto the machine. So now we know that the mileage has been corrected properly, we can turn the car off and put everything back as it should be. We're going to connect the speedometer first, just push it back into place and fit the two screws on the top. and slide the cast box back into the plastic trim and put the 10 millimeter screw back in and just tighten it with the 10 millimeter spanner once that's done we're going to fit the plastic cover back on with the little plastic trim on the side and the three t20 screws Once you've tightened all of the screws and put the plastic clip back in, you have finished with the whole procedure and the car is ready to go. Make sure to like the video, leave a comment if you have any suggestions and subscribe to our channel and make sure you click the bell icon to get regular notifications of our new uploads. Thank you.